The lesson of strength is this. It is not having the strength to kill those you hate, but those you love. Strength is when you crush their lives beneath your hands, murder them to save them from falling into the Shadowlands as you have. So spoke Hanha, one of only a handful of Wookiees who left Kashyyyk during the time of the old Sith Wars. His species is one of the most well-known in Star Wars and one of the most well-liked too. The Wookiees are generally known among Star Wars fans as strong and fearsome, but honorable and righteous as well. Something exemplified by Chewbacca, the most famous of their kind. But not every Wookiee was as noble as Chewie. Some were violent, resentful, or even downright vicious. Han Ha, the Wookiee we'll be talking about today, was all three. What's more, his violence, resentment, and viciousness were directed against a singular target, humanity. Attention, Sergeant on deck! From an early age, Han Ha stood out from the other Wookiees of his tribe. He never truly felt at home among his people. Instead, he constantly felt the call of the Shadowlands, the monster-infested floor of Kashyyyk's planetary jungle. As he grew older, he began to spend ever more time down on the forest floor, hunting and killing without restraint. His tribe became suspicious of him and began to feel he was becoming too vicious and bestial. One day, they refused to allow him back into their village, banishing him to the Shadowlands for good. To understand the significance of this, we need to delve a little into Wookiee beliefs. To the Wookiees, the Shadowlands were more than just the dangerous surface of their world. The Shadowlands represented the brutal, animalistic side of life, a place without mercy, where prey was endlessly sought out and butchered by predators. Wookiees exiled to the Shadowlands were held by their tribes to have become not just animals but vicious creatures of darkness. But Hanha's case was different. Even before his exile, he felt the call of the beast and heeded it. Now, in a previous video about the suffering of the Wookiees, we told the story of Kashyyyk and how it was enslaved. In 4020 BBY, shortly before the onset of the old Sith Wars, human representatives of Zerka Corporation first arrived on Kashyyyk. In those days, the Wookiees hadn't yet invented space travel and they knew next to nothing of outside the galaxy. Zerka's scouts saw them as primitive, primitive but strong. Zerka legally secured ownership of Kashyyyk and then set out about making the planet profitable by taking Wookiees as slaves. But at first, Zerka didn't make its intentions clear to the Wookiees. They approached them as friends and helpers, gaining the trust of the local tribes and learning their ways. Then, when they deemed their infiltration sufficient, they struck. Zerka began its campaign of enslavement by ambushing Wookiee hunting parties in the Shadowlands and by setting themselves up to save Wookiee lives, following which those Wookiees would owe them life debts. Then, they began moving against entire villages in force, enslaving adults and children alike. From the Shadowlands, Hanha watched all of this unfold. He and the other Wookiees had initially passed the humans off as weak, believing they were prey and the Wookiees predators, but they had been wrong and the tables had turned. He knew that this tribe, his village, would be the next to fall to the slavers. What he did next is best rendered in his own words. Zerka fell upon my people like Kinrath, quick, deadly, armed with weapons that my people had never seen. I watched, I knew what would happen. Prey is devoured, broken, and my eyes filled with blood. And I knew my people would be sentenced, would become slaves. They would turn into prey forever. Hunted, but demeaned, not killed. I killed the young ones first. Those were the ones in most danger. Then I moved on to the adults, from the weakest to the strongest, as they slumbered. Then when many awoke, I slaughtered them too. With Rick Blade and Bowcaster, they fell. But with every one that fell, I gripped them by the throat and stared into their eyes. I let them see the Shadowlands and all of its darkness. I let them see what their weakness had brought them. Something inside Hanha had snapped, or perhaps it had always been snapped and simply chose then to come to the surface. When Zerka slavers discovered Hanha standing over the bodies of his tribe, they were furious at him for killing their herd. They shackled him and made him a slave, a fate Hanha accepted willingly. The slavers sent him on a ship to Nashadar, where he was to be sold to the highest bidder. But during the journey from Kashyyyk to Nashadar, Hanha broke free and began hunting the slavers. There was nowhere for the humans to run. Over the course of weeks, Hanha hunted them like beasts of the Shadowlands. He picked them off one by one, 
hiding their bodies in storage containers for those who remained to find, and letting those that had hidden in the air then starve before he finished them off. On autopilot, the slaver's ship eventually reached and crashed on Nashada. When he emerged from the wreckage, Hanha found himself in a forest of metal skyscrapers, which he accepted as his new home. To Hanha, Nashada was a lot like Kashyyyk. There, billions of living beings were always competing with each other, often hunting and killing to survive. Where others would see a vast slum, Hanha saw the Shadowlands. Now free, Hanha became a hunter again, but instead of hunting beasts, he hunted humans, though he personally didn't see a difference. As humans had enslaved his people, he now enslaved them, selling families and devastating entire colonies. He brutally tormented his human captives, broke their spirits, and only when they could no longer suffer would he let them die. He sought nothing less than the misery and death of every human in the galaxy. Through it all, Hanha continued to wear the shackles the slavers had put on him back on Kashyyyk all those years ago. Though he had long since broken his chains, he kept the shackles as a reminder of what the humans of Zerka had taught him. From them, he had learned a slavery, that the lives of the weak belonged to the strong. With chains, Zerka had made him weak, but after breaking free, he had become strong again and he swore to teach the other humans the lessons that Zerka had taught him. To again quote the bitter Wookiee, as humans taught me slavery, I started selling humans, many at a time, wailing packs of children and their mothers, entire tribes of humans. There's a debt that you humans can never repay me, and that is my life debt, one that humans will pay with their lives. Despite having left Kashyyyk and having killed his entire tribe, Hanha still clung to the Wookiee tradition of the life debt. To him, it was the last thing that kept him connected to his people. The last path to what he called the place beyond the Shadowlands, an afterlife beyond the unending hunt where he could reunite with the Wookiees. He secretly wished they would forgive him for what he had done and that when he died, they would allow him to be free of the Shadowlands, to be free of the cycle of predator and prey, of weakness and strength. He believed that giving up the life debt would be giving up the last thing that made him a Wookiee. He saw his vendetta against humans as an extension of the life debt concept, as he was teaching to the humans what they had taught to him. It should be mentioned that Hanha didn't just blame humans for enslaving him and the other Wookiees, but also for the death of his tribe. Hanha, of course, was the one who slaughtered his village, but he didn't exactly see those deaths as his fault or even as murder. He believed that, by threatening to enslave his tribe, Zerka was responsible for their deaths. If Hanha hadn't killed them at all, they would have been broken and made into prey, and that was something he saw as worse than murder. In his own words, they are not dead. Where I sent them, they are free. Even as their screams fell upon me, even as they fell still as I crushed the life from them, I know that they are far from the Shadowlands, in a place where they will never be chained. This was why he hunted, enslaved, and murdered humans. He was avenging his tribe. What's more, he was avenging himself. He had been exiled to the Shadowlands before Zerka came to Kashyyyk, but in his mind, he had still linked to his people in spirit. Hanha saw the massacre of his tribe and his being taken away from Kashyyyk as a more permanent form of exile to the Shadowlands. Until he died, he believed he would have to be like the beasts of Kashyyyk, always hunting, killing, and establishing his dominance. He didn't want that life. After spending decades away from Kashyyyk, he wished to dwell in the Shadowlands no longer. But in life, he could never go back, all because of humans. Hanha had been hunting humans for years when one day he was hired to hunt a young woman named Mira. He trapped her in a network of vents on Nar Shaddaa with mines, but this proved to be a miscalculation. Mira was a demolitions expert, and she crossed the minefield without issue. Hanha chased after her, but Mira scrambled the signals of the mines, causing them to explode when he crossed. Hanha was nearly killed by the blast, and he was at Mira's mercy. He expected her to kill him. More so, he wanted her to kill him, to free him from the Shadowlands, but she didn't. Mira felt pity for him and walked away, letting the Wookiee live. Because of this, Hanha now owed her a life debt, something that made him livid. He had twisted the idea of the life debt in his mind as his experiences with Zerka had led him to see it as a kind of shackle. He knew the slavers had taken many of his people by setting Wookiees up to make life debts, and he had come to understand the tradition as analogous to slavery. In Hanha's mind, Mira, a human he considered weak and undeserving, had done to him what Zerka had done to his people. He refused to serve her, 
but he refused to abandon the life debt too, as doing so would permanently separate him from his people. Instead, he vowed to repay the debt by killing Mira, as she should have killed him. She had made him a slave, he believed, and to Hanha, the only way to escape bondage a second time was to kill her. Mira and Hanha were both on Nar Shaddaa in 3951 BBY when Mitra Surik, the Jedi exile, came to the world looking for the last of the Jedi. Mira ended up joining Surik and her comrades while Hanha was hired by Visquis, a local Quarren crime boss, to capture Surik. Hanha and Visquis set a trap for the exile but Mira came in her place and Visquis was able to capture her. As a reward for Hanha's help, Visquis allowed the Wookiee to face off against Mira in single combat, but Mira got the upper hand in the resultant battle and Hanha was badly wounded. All those present presumed him dead, but this wasn't the case. Hanha was close to death but not quite dead when Darth Treya found him. Treya revived Hanha, much to the Wookiee's fury, for he didn't want another life debt, but Treya promised she wouldn't shame Hanha by showing him pity or mercy, as Mira had done, and so Hanha reluctantly agreed to do as she asked. She sent him to Malachor V to await the coming of the exile and her followers. When they arrived, Hanha lay waiting in a ravine to the Treyas Academy, ordered to separate Surik from her companions. He remained in hiding as Surik passed by, but soon enough, one of her companions followed and he leapt out to block their path. In doing so, he discovered that his first opponent was to be none other than Mira. In the depths of Malachor V, Hanha and Mira fought one last battle, but the insane Wookiee was outmatched. Surik had trained Mira as a Jedi Sentinel since they had left Nar Shaddaa, and Mira easily won her final battle with Hanha. As Mira went to join Surik at the Treyas Academy, the beaten Hanha begged her to kill him. This time, she complied, and Hanha was finally freed. So that's the kind of depressing story of Hanha, the murderous Wookiee who dedicated his life to killing humans. But what do you think? Would you like us to tell the tale of Mira, Hanha's sworn enemy next? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you go guys, if you want access to our behind the scenes discord and exclusive content, check us out on Patreon. If you want to listen to the music we used in this video and plenty of our recent videos, check us out on our music channel Relax Jack. And if you just want to join the wider Geetsleys community, check out our main Geetsleys discord. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.